The Book of Joy by the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu, written by Douglas Abrams. This is not your kind of spiritual or self-help book because this is about a get-together of two spiritual leaders and they were interviewed by a writer slash editor. This book is like taking a holy retreat with the two spiritual experts talking about how they find joy in their lives amidst ill challenges and the pillars of joy and how we readers could apply it in our lives. They had five days, I think, in doing the interviews, but I finished reading it in 10 days. So I had a longer spiritual retreat with this amazing humans. I really took my time and did my best to understand the book that I have to read it in my most relaxed and convenient time. Quick recap about the two main personalities in this book. We have first the Dalai Lama is a Buddhist monk and a Nobel Peace Prize winner and Archbishop Tutu is also a Nobel Peace Prize winner and a leader in racial justice in South Africa. My first impression of the book upon reading the title and looking at the cover was that reading this, I said to myself, might help my spiritual journey in this life. And I did the right choice. It was as if I had an experience of sipping my tea and listening to wisdom-filled, light-hearted conversation of my grandparents, or at least, should I say, the grandparents that I never had. Of course, their age was just a small factor on the wisdom that they have incurred. The fact that they had experienced and witnessed so much pain, suffering, and threats in their life, you know, would really make them see the world in a different view. I could call it seeing the world in a non-materialistic fashion. Okay, so as a millennial, you know, I, I grew up with a different system and technology. I could not extrapolate much other lessons in this book, but I did try my best to tell you the takeaway lessons of it that I had learned by reading uh, more than a thousand pages for almost 10 days in just a you know, few minutes in a few minute podcast. As I had said, it was like taking a spiritual retreat, but with two religions, Christianity and Buddhism. Disclaimer, the short lessons I will be telling you, dear listeners, would not give the same experience as reading the entire book. Let's go on to the points. The first point that I reflected on is the things that hinders us to find joy in life is confined in our own head. Well, there are real problems in this world like storms, tsunamis, earthquakes, pain and illness, and hunger. But there are problems that we create in our minds, such as worrying about the material things that we could not have, like many technological gadgets. And thus, finding joy starts with our perspective and attitude. Second point is if we are facing problems and cannot find the silver lining of happiness, then think about others. Shift your perspective and acknowledge that others are suffering too. I have a situation where I ask my friend who works as a nurse in a hospital and I asked her how she deals with her job and she told me that it is hard. Sometimes you don't get to eat, take bladder breaks, check your phone. But when you look at your patients fighting for their life, holding on to machines for life support, my friend nurse, she does not think of her own discomfort anymore. And it makes her accept her situation and work along. And that is how she finds joy in her 
very busy and tedious work. The third point is there there is no joy in formality. Formality makes us uneasy and it hinders connection at the human level. Sometimes we treat others as if they are structures. But when we are born and when we die, there is no formality. Fourth takeaway point that I learned from this book is related to anger. How can we lessen our anger? One thing I learned from the book was if we are angered by someone, we need to recognize that that person also has fears, anger, frustration, and weaknesses. We could reflect on that. We could reflect on what others are going through. And then that would make the feeling of the intense anger that we are experiencing be lessened. The fifth lesson learned in this book is that sadness, about sadness, according to the book, sadness has its benefits. This is a time when we could reflect on our lives and be drawn to many aspects of art such as poetry, writing, and music. We have to embrace the sadness that we feel because we are humans and we are bound to have emotions. It also teaches us to support others and if they are grieving or in despair. That is why family solidarity becomes stronger if there are adversaries in life. If we feel sadness in our life, in our family, the stronger the family becomes because we go through the adversities together. Okay. Next lesson or the sixth lesson in this book is finding joy according to the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu is the old saying count your blessings there was a part in the book where they sort of disagreed it was the concept of envy so for the Dalai Lama envy has to be halted from the very beginning while for the Archbishop, he thinks that envy is a normal human response and could be used as a motivation. If you want to achieve something, you need to work on it. And so, envy becomes your motivator. But the lesson is clear. Even if they disagree on um, the concept of enviousness, the lesson is clear that if we harbor jealousy or envy in our lives, we are depriving ourselves a chance to be happy. The seventh lesson is confronting our own mortality. These two people, you know, the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu, are already in their 80s. And we all know that at the maximum lifespan is just about 100 years old, we could all agree that 100 years is quite short. But if we have lived our lives well and in peace, when death comes to us, then there is no reason to count the years passing by. We all want to live longer, but we have to face the reality that time will come for all of us to leave this world. That's why we have to be happy and live our lives to make others happy. It noted passage on the book is about laughter. Yes, laugh at yourself on your mistakes and laughter breaks social barriers. It strengthens our relationship with other people and above all, it makes us healthy. So just laugh. Ninth takeaway lesson is forgiving other people. Yes, self explanatory because no one will be happy if you have grudges why let our small hearts carry heavy grudges give it a break and then we could enjoy life instead of being trapped in a past of bitter recollections it's up to ourselves to let go of things so that we can enjoy the time that we have in this world the last and the tenth 
takeaway lesson is about compassion. Compassion, according to the book, is a skill to be honed. According to my friend, the nurse friend that I have, when she started to be a children's nurse at the age of 21, she was mere focused in how she could do her job right. She wanted to avoid mistakes, make sure her patient live up until her shift. She noticed that some honed nurses or her senior nurses works with a great passion, great concern for their patients. They advocate for them. They talk to their patients even when they are intubated. They see the patient as a whole. And she had observed this and finally, as years go by, and with years of working in that same area, she learned how to be compassionate. And she said that she did not notice it right away until some new nurse in the area told her that he admired her sense of workmanship. She said that compassion just comes to you when you are constantly exposed to situations that requires you to be more compassionate. Okay, so those were the 10 points. I mean, that was a lot because the book really has so many things to say about finding joy and finding happiness. But still, the last part of the book um, was subtitled as The Joy Practices. Basically, this part looks like an instructional material on how to meditate and focus on finding joy amidst all of our worldly concerns. It was a short but full-packed portion of the book. Finally, I am going to wrap up this 12-minute podcast by reminding our listeners that there are many things that we all could do to be joyful. But of course, you have to not make yourself the center of your joy you have to build joy not only for yourself but for others as well i thank the people who are behind in creating this book and to you who listened until the end thank you